In this video, I will explain the relationship between an object's events and event handlers. But first, let's find out what is event-driven programming. This is Sir Isaac Newton. Newton was the father of movement or motion. One of Newton's claims to fame was his laws of motion. In his third law of motion, he mentioned something about action and reaction. It was something like, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. An event-driven programming language like Delphi also requires action. When an action is performed, a reaction will follow. An example of an action in Delphi is when a user clicks on a button. The click action performed by the user on a button causes a reaction. For example, it may cause a message to show. Or it can be a calculation that is performed, or it can even be data that is saved to a database. We refer to the action that we perform as an event. The reaction that we get comes from code that programmers write inside something referred to as an event handler. Now, let's look at some of these events and event handlers in more detail. In order to invoke an event in Delphi, we first need an object. That object must have one or more events that can be triggered. And the result of an event must be programmed in an event handler. Let's look at an example. An object can be an instance of a button, an edit, a bitmap button, or even an object that users can't see, like a timer. Here I'm using a button named BTN Display as an example. Events in Delphi are prefixed with the word ON, like on click. The on click event is an example of an event that can be performed by the button called BTN Display. When the user invokes the on click event by clicking the button, nothing will happen if we did not program the reaction in an event handler. Event handlers are Delphi procedures. The name of an event handler is a combination of the object's name and the name of the event. In this example, the name of the event handler is BTN Display Click. The first line of the event handler is called the procedure header. And for the moment, it is only important to notice the name of the procedure in the header. The rest of the header will be explained in later lessons. A procedure in Delphi also has a procedure body. The procedure body starts here with the begin statement and ends here with the end statement. You must do your programming in the lines between the begin and end statements. In other words, in the body of the procedure. In this example, I type the statement to display a message dialog, which is a normal message box. The message dialog must display the message, you clicked the display button. When the user now clicks on the button called BTN display, the onclick event will be triggered, which in turn will execute the code in the event handler in this procedure. The result will then be to display a message box that looks like this one. Here, we only looked at one object, a button, and we only looked at one event, which is the onclick event. But objects may also have many other events. An object normally has one default event, but it may also have several additional events. Let's now look at the default events of an object. I'm going to use the display button as an example again. When placing a button on a form, it is only natural to expect the user to click on that button. Therefore, the onclick event is the default event of the button. The event handler for the default event can be created when a programmer double clicks on the object in design time. For example, while I'm still busy designing my program, I can double click on the button called BTN Display, and Delphi will create this event handler, which is the procedure called BTN Display Click. All I must do is to program my custom code here between the begin and end statements. But somehow, Delphi needs to know that this code must be executed when the user clicks the button. In other words, Delphi must link the event handler to the onclick event of this object. This linking of the event and the event handler can be found in the object inspector. Remember, in previous lessons we looked at the object inspector. We learned that the object inspector displays the properties and the events of an object. The properties are listed here in the properties tab, and the events are listed in the events tab. In this example, we see the object is the button called BTN display, and the events for BTN display is listed in the events tab. Here we see the onclick event of BTN display. In the cell next to onclick is an entry that is also the name of our event handler. That is how Delphi knows that BTN display's onclick event will be handled by the event handler called BTN display click. 
This linking happens when you double click the button to program the button's default event. But as you can see here, a button also has several other events like on mouse down, on mouse enter, on mouse leave and many others. We are also going to look at some of these additional or non-default events in a moment. But let's first look at a few examples of default events for other Delphi objects. Ok, we know now that the button's default event is on click. The form's default event is on create. In other words, if a programmer double clicks on the surface of a form, he or she will create an event handler for the on create event of the form. This event is triggered when a form is loaded or created in memory. The combo box's default event is on change. This event is triggered every time the user changes a selection in the combo box. The bitmap button is just a special type of button, so its default event is on click. The checkbox's default event is also on change. It is triggered every time the user changes the status of the checkbox by checking it or unchecking it. There are many other objects available in Delphi. We will explore some of their default events and event handlers in future lessons and courses. But now, let's first look at some of these non-default events also listed here in the Events tab of the Object Inspector. They are the additional events of an object. I'm going to continue this explanation again with the display button as an example. We learned that an event handler is automatically created for the default event of an object when a programmer double clicks on the object in design time. To also create an event handler for an additional event, simply double click inside the cell next to the event's name in the events tab of the object inspector. For example, here I double clicked on the cell next to the on mouse enter event and also in the cell next to the on mouse leave event. Delphi then created and linked two additional event handlers. They are automatically named by Delphi. This one named BT in display mouse enter is linked to the on mouse enter event of the button. And BT in display mouse leave is linked to the on mouse leave event of the button. The on mouse enter event is triggered when the mouse pointer enters the surface of a button when a user moves the mouse. You will write code here between the begin and end statements that will execute when that happens. The on mouse leave event is triggered when the mouse pointer leaves the surface of a button, when a user moves the mouse away from the button. You must write code here between the begin and end statements that must execute when the mouse pointer moves away from the button. Here we only looked at some of the additional events for a button, but most Delphi objects have additional events. Let's also look at examples of additional events for a form. We know that the onCreate event is the default event of a form. The onCreate event is triggered when a form is loaded in memory. A form also has an onActivate event. This event is triggered every time you switch focus to a form, for example, if your program displays two forms on the screen and the user switches from one form to another, the unactivated event of that form that becomes active will be triggered. The onResize event of a form is triggered when a user resizes the form. That can be done by dragging the edges of the form to make it bigger or smaller or by minimizing or maximizing the form when clicking on the Minimize or Maximize button in the top right corner of the form. And these are just some of the events that a form can perform. From these examples, it is clear to us now that Delphi is an event-driven programming language. In a Delphi program, nothing can happen if an event is not triggered. I think this is enough theory about events and event handlers for the moment. In the next video, I will demonstrate event and event handlers in an application. I want you to explore with me. I'll talk to you again in the next video.